Hi, I'm Scott Young, and I'm a barber at Gentleman Rogues, back again, uh, with my friend. Super oh, friend. Super friend. Super friend. Some, a little bit of a friend, Sam Avery. Right, well tell me then, what are we, what are we doing today? You know what I'm getting, man? We're gonna, uh, <laughs> we're gonna bolt it on the sides, bring it up nice and tight, sharpen the beard up, keep most of the length in the top and just thin it out a little bit. Keep it, Keep it with them curls. All right. Luckily, he's got no product in there, which is a massive help straight away. So you just section off this top section. Right, so I've disconnected the top, so you've just got the sides to work with here, so we can just leave the two sections to cut separately. Start with a two, um, just to move that little bit of that top weight. We still want to keep the head nice and square and um, to keep that nice and masculine in shape on this little pond. Uh, so you're just going to essentially take away some of that loose weight that's obviously overgrown in time. So what's crack today? What are you doing? What am I doing today? Mm. Working, man. All day. You work? I do, mate. I have a job. Despite being the man with the tattooed head, who <laughs> some people say looks a bit like a criminal. I don't know. <laughs> I bake cakes. <laughs> I bake cakes. Like a real f***ing rock and roll man. <laughs> There's nothing more rock and roll than that. You're still vegan? I am, man. Yeah, three years now. Still doing it. Still alive. I haven't died from protein deficiency or anything yet. So you just drop down to one and a half or one open. Um, with Sam's hair, as I cut it fairly regularly. Um, I go down the grades now, so just go down from a two, one, zero, and all the way down to foils at the bottom. Um, just fine with his head shape, which is a lot easier. And where I've cut his hair for a number of years now, it's I know his know his head shape and his hair type. So um, I find that's the easiest and smoothest method to get the nicest fade on him. Where he has tattoos under his head, it's important, I think, as well, to make sure that you're very methodical with the grading and make sure that you've definitely got every piece of hair in that section that you're trying to pick up because, obviously, with the, the tattoos underneath, it can sometimes be hard to see, especially as he's got sort of black on black, um, the hair underneath. So just make sure you're going over those, those sections that you want to clear away fully. So I'd flick it down to a one now. Just getting all that weight underneath there. Uh, where's the charity go? Uh, King Charles. In, oh, the pub. Where we were the other day, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. music on all day. Chris Payne's playing there, right? Yeah, he's on at half four. On Friday or Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. You coming? I might be. It depends if we're, um, no, we're in Brighton. No, you're not, apparently. So, just basically the open guard now, just flicking between a half and zero, um, just to get out any lines. I don't like with Sam's hair putting, where he's got such dark hair, putting a harsh line in. Some people put a harsh line in and fade down to that. That's what he sort of used to do with his hair. But I find it, I find you get a lot more even fade if you just fade down from the top. Um, and you can sort of do it a little bit more, a sort of eye judgment and weather where the colouring needs to needs to go and needs to stay. So it's just a case of sort of flicking out yeah, from, from a half and anywhere in between that to a zero now, just to make sure it goes right down to the skin. And then around the bottom edges, we'll start to get out the detailer and, and the foil in a minute. So yeah, I'm just getting the detailer out now, just ready for the foil, just get right down as close as I can. And just be just around the bottom cleaning edges around that C cup section. C cup. So now we're just polishing off those bottom edges for the foils to get right down to 
baby's bum. Some people do get a little bit of irritation with the foil, so it's always sort of best to ask first if they've got sensitive skin. Um, takes a battering every week, so he's immune to it now. So, I've just taken out any excess weight on that top section just to blend that fade into tops of the side of the hair. Um, the comb that I'm using is by Barbers and Gentlemen. It's, it's got like slightly ridged teeth, which I find a lot, lot better than some of the other similar combs out there. But they're just flat. I think it picks up the hair a lot nicer and glides through, and they're a lot easier to use than a lot of the other brands. So yeah, just taking out anything that doesn't need to be there before we cut and connect the top. And at this stage, I always think it's better to be a little bit slower with it, just to make sure that you're not, if you take out too much at this point, then you're going to see it straight away and you've got a big repair job to do when it comes to clipper over comb, so. Okay. So, when cutting the top, we keep it really square for Sam. Um, he just literally wants the ends out. We only sort of do this every three, four cuts. Yeah. He gets cut most week or every other week, so we're literally just taking, just taking the deads out. Yeah, keep all them corners through both sides, just to keep that sort of real masculine square shape, because where he has curly hair, obviously when it dries, it pulls in as well, so where the length you're taking off now sort of is exacerbated when it's dry. When did you go short, Sam? Um, go it was probably it was after last summer, wasn't it? End of last yeah. summer, yeah. So maybe like September, something like that. Well, I haven't seen you since. Yeah, long, a long time. I do miss it now and again. I get the, I get tempted yeah. to grow it back, but, yeah, mate, it, looks but way it just looks so much smarter short, doesn't it? I'll probably get my tash back again though soon. So when texturizing the top, usually do a bit of channeling, which is just coming down in the direction that you want the hair to be sitting. So when I'm drying Sam's hair, we sort of channeled out a few bits of that weight. They say he comes in weekly, so we don't sort of generally take too much out each time. Just the ends and a little bit of channeling just to give that texture if it needs it. And then when drying it, sort of do it in circular motions. We don't want it to go in one specific direction. Um, the best way to get the curls out is to let it dry naturally. Uh, to let the hair literally just dry of its own accord. I think you get the maximum curlage. Uh, but obviously in a barbershop that's not an option. So yeah, trying to do it from a little bit of a higher height and Circling the, circling the hair dryer. Right, and then with the beard, um, what are we do? Just do what we normally do, man. So sort of yeah. fading it down from the board. Uh, I'm not really. I'm quite happy with the length on the bottom of the minute, so to tidy up any loose bits. But no problem. And then off the inside of the tash here. Yeah, take a bit. Yeah. yeah. I want to keep most of the length of the tash because I'm growing it back out again, cool. but obviously just the just them little yeah, yeah. straggles. If you start at one open, so one and a half, Sam, and I know sort of know the midpoint around about here that I need to start to fade from. And just that half guard, just at the top. just above a zero. So two, just again flicking under that one and a half, just blend it into the main beard section. Yeah. 
sort of find with most beards that the slimmer you go through the cheek, it suits the face shape a lot more. So you can get away with having more through the chin, more through the bottom sections, as long as you've got those cheeks nice and tight through the sides, it still keeps the face nice and slim and masculine. So I will be blading the cheeks in, but I would like to set a guideline first for the detailer. So tend to come off the side rather than going down towards it. I think you get a nicer curve. Rather than coming down to me, everyone has their, their preference, but So with Sam's hair, you can see the hair grows up predominantly and then to the side here and then swells here. So he's got quite a hard neckline. So just making sure that we're really gentle, we don't pull hairs. It's not particularly nice for the client. So the hair's ripped out. So just going a little bit slower over that neck section so we make sure we don't dig the clipper into the neck. I often get asked as well where the best line is to, to line the bottom of a beard. And I always think it's face dependent. So I always think it depends on the beard length because ultimately what you're trying to do with this bottom beard line is accentuate the jawline. So, and everybody is slightly different. So with sand, it, it runs off here based on the length if it was a little bit shorter then we'll probably run it a little bit higher um, but never into that chin, <laughs> chin strap region it's not a uh, it's not a look in England again comes down to personal preference um, with Sam we never blade the neck with a straight razor um, just because he doesn't like it he gets irritation sometimes under the neck so he just prefers it with the detailers That's and then with the moustache literally as he said he's already trying to grow it out so we'll be taking literally just the straggles off the inner lip there so that he doesn't get all of his freshly baked cakes <laughs> Well, any beard or moustache hair, it's important to comb it down a few times um, because it is pubic hair. So it doesn't sit the same as the hair on your head will. Make sure you covered it all. I just came through a few times and go back over the same section. <laughs> And when lining the cheeks, tension is the most important, I think. Make sure you get good tension on the face. Okay, just came it through, and then again, same. I do use a detailer. The initial line. So he's just come out of the shower, it's quite dry, so we will use a balm to help that.
Well, always use a balm. So much quite dry, coarse beard hair. So balm always helps just to hydrate and make that hair a lot softer, more manageable. The texturizing spray sort of does similar to what a boost powder sort of does, like a bit like a sort of dry shampoo. Just put a little bit of that in just to sort of give it some volume. And finish it off with like a matte cream. So, again with Sam's hair, I sort of generally always do the hair before the beard. Um, it's good as well because it allows the moisture and to dry into the top a little bit more. So you've got a little bit more of that curl coming through. Like I said, the best way to get curls is to let the hair naturally dry. So with curly hair, I'd always cut the hair, top, the hair first before the beard, because then by the time that you've done the beard and finished that, then you'll get a lot more sort of natural curls flowing through. Stop. Before you watch the next video, let me tell you, you are worth it. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you deserve to invest in yourself. You deserve to pamper yourself. You deserve to take care of your skin, your hair, your beard, and Beard Brand has your back with products, not just for your hair, your beard, and your skin, but also for your mind.